Hello friends. In this video, we are going to look at some of the applications of breadth first search. Let's start this with the brief overview of what breadth first search is. The basic idea about breadth first search is to traverse the node in layers. Let's see this with the help of an example. We start traversing from node A, we visit it and go to its next neighbor B and C. Once we have visited them, we visit the next layer L3 having D and E. We finally visit node F and this is what our complete traversal would look like. For a better explanation of breadth first search, you can see our previous videos where we have covered it in detail. Now let's move forward and list down few of the applications that we will cover in this tutorial. The first one is finding shortest path between two nodes in a graph. Next, we will look at how a web crawler uses BFS. Then we look at the working of a social network graph. We then check for the existence of a cycle in a graph. We check if our graph is bipartite or not. We then see how BFS optimize broadcasting in a network. Finally, we see the use of BFS in Ford Fulkerson algorithm for max flow. Let's begin with our first application, finding shortest path in an unweighted graph. We know that the shortest path from a source to a destination would be one that involves the least number of edges. Let's see this with the help of an example. Let's say that our source node is A and destination node is F. We first initialize our distance to node F as 0 if both source and destination are same, else we make it infinity. Next for every edge from node B to node W, we see if node W is visited or not. If it is unvisited, we update distance of W as distance of V plus 1. Let's quickly go through the quick run of the code for our sample graph. We start from node A, update B and C, then update D and E, and finally our destination node F. Next application of breadth first search is a web crawler. A web crawler is a program that crawls through the web pages for a particular information. It's a beautiful way to get your data in a brute manner. Let's understand web crawling through your favorite website Geeks for Geeks. Let's say this is the home page of Geeks for Geeks and we have to search for an article on breadth first search. The web crawler will look at the text on home page and since nowhere we have mention of BFS, it will start following all the hyperlinks given on this page. The first is home. Since visited, move ahead comes to algo link. We'll open the page of algo and we'll look for an article on BFS. It should find it and therefore it may stop crawling further. If not, we'll follow all the links given here one by one. If still could not find, we'll move a level ahead and we'll open all the hyperlinks given on the respective page of these hyperlinks. This process will continue until the keyword is found or we reach up to a certain depth. The next application of breadth first search is in a social network where we can find connection between two people. Let's say we have a social network as this. Here Tom is a friend with Sam and Ram and Sam is a friend with Vicky, Harry and Ravi. With the help of BFS, we can find friend of friends and use it to grow the network. In this BFS will suggest Ram to consider adding Vicky, Harry and Ravi as his friend since they are friend of Sam. Next we have cycle detection in an undirected graph using breadth first search. We have a sample graph here and it also contains a cycle. Now the basic algorithm is to see that for every visited vertex V if there is an adjacent U such that U is already visited and U is not parent of V. 
then we say we have a cycle. Let's run bread first on this graph. We start with the vertex A and visit it. Then we move to the adjacent unvisited node B and we visit it. Then we move to the next adjacent unvisited node of B which is C. Now from C we notice that there is no unvisited node left. Also we notice that we have a visited node A which is not parent of C. Therefore we can say that this graph has a cycle and can terminate our algorithm. Next application of BFS is to check if our graph is bipartite or not. Let's have a little idea of what it means. The sole aim of this is to divide our graph vertices into two independent sets such that no edge exists between the elements of the same set. Now we start from the root node and start using two color flags for each visited node. We assign a color to each node which is opposite to what its parent has. If at any point we are unable to do so, we say that our graph is not a bipartite. The next we have is broadcasting a data packet. In computer networks, we are often required to send a data packet to all the recipients. If this data packet has to go to all nodes, the efficient way would be one where the distance between the source and the recipient is minimized. Recall that we have seen how BFS provides a shortest route in an unweighted graph. We use the same concept here and run a BFS from source node to deliver the packet to each recipient. Following BFS would ensure a short route, thereby reducing transmission delay and saving battery power. Next is the Ford Fulkerson algorithm. This algorithm is used to find maximum flow in a flow network. Let's see this with the help of an example. In this network, we have to obtain maximum flow from this source to this sink. Let's see the solution. This will be the solution obtained using the Ford Fulkerson algorithm. In this network, 23 unit would be the maximum amount that can flow from source to sink. Now, how is BFS useful for this? For this, let's understand what a residual graph is. Residual graph of a flow network is a graph which indicate additional possible flow. If there is a path from source to sink in a residual graph, then it is possible to add flow. We can initialize the residual graph as original graph as there is no initial flow and initially residual capacity is equal to original capacity. To find an augmented path, we can do a breadth first search of the residual graph. Using BFS, we can find out if there is a path from source to sink or not. This is how BFS will be useful in finding maximum flow and this implementation of Ford Fulkerson using breadth first search is also known as Edmund Carr algorithm. This we would like to end this tutorial. We have covered just a few of the many many applications that breadth first search has. If you have any doubt or suggestion, please leave them in the comment section below. Thanks for watching.